All right, welcome to our mini lesson on root stems, lexemes, and free morphemes. Now these are some words that are pretty easy to get confused um, when we're talking about morphology, so I'm just going to very briefly run through the differences between these terms. All right, so a root, this is very important in morphology cross-linguistically. Roots are extremely important to understand. They are the central um, meaning morpheme of a word. Now this is really important that it's a single morpheme, right? So it's a single morpheme that has meaning, right? All, all by itself. And that's what gives the word its central meaning is the root. Usually we'll talk about this in a second. Um, a stem is um, the portion of a word which um, inflection attaches to. So this is after we've done um, derivational morphology to create a word with, you know, with meaning, we then attach an inflection to it. Um, a lexeme is the central meaning of a word, a lot like a root, but a root has to be a single morpheme, whereas a lexeme can be multiple morphemes. Now, once we do the examples, this will make more sense. Um, a free morpheme is a word that can stand on its own. And it's a morpheme too. Sorry, I should have said morpheme. That means it has to be one little piece of meaning and it can stand all by itself. All right. So in our lovely word that we have here, anti-disestablishmentarianism, our, you know, famous word that a lot of us learned in elementary school to be the longest word of English, which of course isn't the longest word of English, but you know, it's not even really a word of English, but all right. So we have all these different pieces of, of meaning in this word. We have anti, we have dis, we have established, we have meant, we have air, we have ian, and we have ism. Those all have independent sort of meaning, right? But where does the central meaning of this word come from? It comes from establish, right? Because what this word means is we're against doing whatever's going to follow this. Disestablish means unestablish, right? So we're against unestablish meant, which is just makes this a noun, right? So we're against unestablish making, you know, some the the act of unestablishing. And then these are people who are against um, unestablishing. And this is the belief that this is a good thing, right? So that so that all has to do with establish. So this is our root. Now, establish by itself can stand alone, which means it's also can be a free morpheme. So establish is free, even though in this case it has affixes on it, right? Um, because you can pronounce it by itself. All right, so now we are going to talk about stems. Um, so in the word functionalities, where's our root? right? Our root is function, right? There's our root. That's great. Um, this root is, can be free, right? You can say the word function. Whereas al, you can't say by itself. So that's a bound morpheme. So functionalities, right? You can't say by itself. Um, but you have this word functionality, Right, which means almost the same thing, except this one's plural and this one's singular. 
Um, this plurality is usually taken as an inflectional suffix rather than derivation. Um, if you want to know about the in inflection versus derivation, watch that tutorial video or read that part of the chapter, sorry. Um, uh, but we have these two word functionality and functionalities, right? And we add inflection to functionality to make functionalities, right? Um, which means that functionality right here, sorry, I'm slipping around here. Functionality is a stem, right? So that stem is more than just the root, right? We have a root here, but we add our inflection to functionality, right? These are all derivation, right? So function, all, this makes function a, a, an adjective. This makes it a noun again, right? So it's a de-adjectival noun. And then this is just making it plural, right? So functionality is a stem that is more than just a root. All right, so what about lexemes versus roots? So I said above here that a root is a single morpheme, whereas a lexeme is just the central meaning of a word. Right, so to have something that's a lexeme and not a root, you need something that's more than one root, but still makes up the central meaning of the word. Right, so good examples of these are bluebird and white house. So um, the word bluebird in English is not the same as the, as the two word combination blue and bird. Right, so you can imagine blue birds of any type, right? You could, you could have a blue sparrow, you could have a blue hawk, you could have a blue pigeon, right? And those would all qualify as blue birds. But a blue bird is a specific type of, of bird that is a flycatcher and lives in bluebird boxes. And there's a whole set of, set of um, things about bluebirds. It's a specific type of species. Similarly, you could have a white house that's just a house that's white, right? So, so any house on your street that's white qualifies as a white house. But there's a difference between a white house and the white house. And you can hear it in how you pronounce it, right? Um, so in these words, there's two roots, right? So you can use that as a root, you can use that as a root independently, but when they come together, they make one meaning that is distinct from just using those two words together. Right, and so that's how you can tell that White House in this context is a lexeme, even though it's made out of two roots. Um, and you can tell that because you can you can do derivation on these two, right? So a non-bluebird or um, White Houses, right? That would be a, a little bit weird since there's only one White House. Um, but you know, you could you could say they're selling miniature white houses in the gift shop or whatever. Um, uh, and, that's, and that's how you can tell that it's a lexeme that you know, works together and forms an independent meaning from the meaning of the two roots in, used independently. All right, so the last thing that we have to distinguish is a free morpheme, which is a morpheme that can stand on its own. It's really tempting to conflate this with a root because most roots in English, at least, are also free morphemes, right? So we talked about establish, you can use that by itself. Function, you can use that as excel itself. Run, walk, dance, dog, uh, sweep. These are all things that you can use as free morphemes. So it's really tempting to, to, to get root and free morpheme confused. But there are some examples of roots in English that are not free morphemes. Um, so for example, um, in English we have this construction, un, uh, you can use un to, to negate something, right? So unclaimed, we have a, a, a free morpheme claim, which in this case is, we'll cross that out, right? So you can, you can unclaim something to, you know, say that's not mine, right? But we also have things like uncouth, right? Um, you cannot use couth by itself. Couth has some sort of abstract meaning, right? So if you think about the, the phrase uncouth, which is like rude, right? Sort of, it's, it's sort of like rude and barbaric, right? To be uncouth. Um, uh, 
we don't really know what couth means, right? But we know that there's a, a compositional meaning there where you're you're unifying couth, whatever couth is. And so we can sort of come up with an idea of what couth would be, right? So to be uncouth is to be rude. So to be couth is probably to be not rude, right? To be polite or, you know, at least acceptable, right? So to be uncouth, right? But we don't really know what couth means and you can't use that in English by itself. And so this is what's known as a bound root. And we have a bunch of other ones of these in English, um, but one of the discussion questions is to find more examples of these. So if you're going to do the discussion question about um, this video, um, make sure you're using your own examples. Um, don't just use the ones I gave here. But um, hope that helped you understand this distinction.